Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Test 2 Plus today. I am Trace, and this is episode one of five in our series on cloning. Stick around, make sure you subscribe. We've got a special guest coming later in this series, so go down there, click the subscribe button. Also, you can check us out on iTunes. If you don't want to watch the whole video series this week, you can find us over there and listen to an audio podcast. We've been having some problems with our iTunes feed lately, so if you're not seeing the podcast, check it out either on a third-party app or on your phones. Uh, we've been able to find it pretty easily that way. So this week, we're going to talk about how cloning happens naturally in nature. We don't have to force it. We're also going to talk about when we started artificial cloning, what the future of cloning looks like, the ethics of cloning, that's where our special guest comes in, and all sorts of other stuff. So make sure you stick around, make sure you subscribe. So what exactly is cloning? According to the National Human Genome Research Institute, they define cloning as, quote, a number of different processes that can be used to produce genetically identical copies of a biological entity. That makes sense. When you think of cloning, you think of identical copies of a living organism. And when you think of cloning, you probably picture a science lab, which makes a lot of sense. The, the, a lot of cloning does happen in labs. Three types of artificial cloning include gene cloning or DNA cloning, where you produce copies of genes or segments of DNA. There's reproductive cloning, which is copies of whole animals. There's therapeutic cloning, which is cloning little parts of people, so maybe a liver or kidneys or an ear or something, to uh, create tissues and replace injured or damaged or diseased tissues. But cloning happens outside of the lab, too. You just probably don't think about it. Cloning is actually a natural process. Some bacteria, plants, even some animals will all naturally clone as part of their reproductive cycle. In fact, the term clone comes from the Greek word klonos, meaning twig, because they used to make new trees by using cuttings. You would graft a cutting instead of growing from a seed. It would be faster. Single-celled organisms and some plants will naturally clone as well through asexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction is that done with only one set of cells. It makes an identical offspring to the parent cell. It's essentially like a clone. There are three basic ways asexual reproduction causes cloning. There's binary fission, clonal fragmentation, and budding. Uh, binary fission is where a parent cell splits into two cells, leaving two genetically identical daughter cells. They're natural clones, more or less. And this happens in things like bacteria and amoebas. Then there's clonal fragmentation. That's when the parent would break into multiple fragments or pieces and they develop into new organisms with the same genetic makeup. This is seen in like plants, like with cuttings and also starfish. Uh, budding is the third major form of asexual cloning. And this is when a copy starts growing when attached to a parent. Then once it's fully formed, it breaks away and it forms a whole new organism. This is usually seen in sponges and yeast. However, if you Google things like budding and cloning, you're mostly going to get marijuana growing websites. Just calling you out on that one. Strawberries are also grown by cloning themselves. They send out a runner, which is sort of like a stem that goes out, it takes root, and then an exact clone of the strawberry plant grows from there. Potatoes do something similar, but they produce the tubers, the part that we eat, and the tuber can grow new roots or shoots and and then you, then you eat it and you enjoy it with some garlic and butter, right? And potatoes, they're just clones, people. They're just tuber clones. Another form of natural cloning, which is really cool, is called parthenogenesis. This is basically reproduction without fertilization. Some would call it a clone. Uh, some scientists do refer to it as that. It may not technically be a clone. There's some genetic changes. But it happens when an offspring is born without fertilization. So no male is fertilizing a female egg. Offspring are usually females and they're usually clones of their mother. Parthenogenesis has been seen in Komodo dragons, the New Mexico whiptail lizard, freshwater water fleas, bees, wasps, the bonnet head shark, the boa constrictor. It's essentially a virgin birth, you guys. It's a virgin birth and it makes a clone. Super cool, sci-fi. When you are made, you get half of your mom's genes and half of your dad's. So the egg, that is part of parthenogenesis is only the mom's genes and they're doubled. So that's why it's not quite the same as a clone. Babies are genetically identical to their mother because they only get half of their mom's genes. And some scientists don't feel like that means cloning uh, because cloning is 100% identical. But when you read the studies, they usually kind of refer to them both ways, parthenogenesis and, the, and cloning. It's kind of like you walk over to a cage or a tank where an animal was alone by itself and then there's a baby animal in there. And that seems like cloning to me, I don't know. Even though it's cool, 
Parthenogenesis is actually kind of a bad sign for an ecosystem. When scientists discover virgin births, uh, they see it as a habitat loss, overfishing. It's a stressed animal, and it can't find a mate. So the only way to reproduce is to do so asexually. And in a sexual being, that's bad because you don't have the diversity of DNA that comes with sexuality. The whole reason that animals kind of do sexuality, that living organisms do that, is so that they can diversify their DNA. When you don't do that, you end up not having a species survive for very long. Now, many people think that identical twins are also a form of cloning. It's kind of the same uh, and also kind of not. It's called monozygotic twins, mono meaning one, zygote referring to uh, fertilized egg cell. And these are not clones of parents, but sort of like clones of each other. The fertilized egg will divide into two eggs and those two eggs have almost identical genetic information, and it was once thought that they were identical in every way, but as we got better at reading people's genes, we found that that's not necessarily true. Uh, some twins are born with small genetic differences, and as they grow, genetic differences will and can increase. For instance, one study cites a set of twins where one was missing some genes on a chromosome that would indicate risk for leukemia, and the other didn't have that risk. And there was a debate on whether these kinds of differences develop from nature, whether it's you know nature or nurture from one's environment, but it's still a debate. Identical twins are close enough to being clones that they're referred to as clones, but technically they're not 100% identical. As cool as it is to talk about how plants and animals and even you know naturally humans sometimes can create clones of themselves. I'm doing uh, the finger quotes for those listening at home. We want to really get into artificial cloning, right? We want to get into back into the lab because that's where a lot of the interesting science is happening. But tomorrow, we're going to talk about that. So make sure you come back for that. If I didn't mention any plants or animals that you know of that have parthenogenesis or clones, let us know down in the comments. Make sure you subscribe for more Test Tube Plus, And thanks for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>